Hi, this is Brett Ingram, entrepreneur and award-winning product creator. And today, I want to share with you the two metrics that predict your success and profitability. Now, when you think about metrics for your business, do you get excited and energized? Or <laughs> maybe your eyes glaze over with boredom? It doesn't actually matter how we feel about metrics, but it does matter that we know and we understand two key metrics about our business. So no matter which one it is and what industry it's in. You know, I just read an article about a celebrity couple and they had started a business. So you would think a celebrity couple, just by the fact that they're celebrities, they're going to have a tremendous amount of marketing like you know, juice for free because they're not going to have to even market it in order to, you know, be able to promote it because of their own personality and their own celebrity. And the interesting thing is sales were actually good. And from what I understand, they were growing and people actually seemed to love the product. Yet out of nowhere, they just declared bankruptcy for the business. So the question is, how could that happen? How could that happen if you feel like you have a business and the business is growing, and the sales are growing, and you know it looks like it's a product that people like, most people would think that means this product, this company, this business is on its way, and the sky is the limit. Unfortunately, it isn't quite that simple when we break it all down and we take a look at business in the way that it actually operates. There's a lot more to it, because our business, no matter how altruistic or world changing we think it is or hope it will be, at the end of the day, it has revenue and it has expenses. And we need the revenue ultimately to be higher than the expenses over time or we can't survive, no matter how noble our cause. And that's just the plain truth. It's just plain, simple math, right? You need to be able to make more than you spend over time. It doesn't have to be instantaneous in order to be able to survive. So. It's easy to get excited about sales charts and growing revenue. You know, if we, if we have a business and we see that the sales are going up, it's very easy to get excited about that. You know, um, I know uh, when I was in the computer business that I had, you know, one of the cool things was uh, the idea of contemplating what a good sales revenue or sales amount would be. And I remember thinking, you know, obviously they're higher ticket sales, so it's easier to rack up more, you know, more sales than typical thing. But I thought, geez, you know, if we could hit a million dollars, I mean, that's a great milestone for any business, right? I mean, if you think of a business with a million in sales, you automatically think of profit. You automatically think of the business owner being someone who's wealthy, who has all this stuff. Well, I can tell you that uh, my business did well over a million, I think it was like a million two or a million three. The first year that we went over a million, um, we didn't really have a lot of profit. So we had over a million dollars in sales, but we didn't have a lot to show for it. And part of that was because our expense structure was so high that it was difficult to turn a lot of that into profit. So it's easy to get confused by the fact that there's revenue and if the if the scale, if the curve looks like it's going up, it's easy to automatically think, well, this is a winner, right? Because the sales are going up. And it may be the case. Sometimes it's just an issue of float where the, the profit is coming, but we need money to pay our bills now. And then down the road, when the, when the you know, numbers come in, it will all work itself out. And that does happen. But in our particular case, it wasn't really the situation. Our profit margin was pretty low. And so ultimately, even though we did over a million in sales, it wasn't really that great. So the, the thing of it is just looking at balance sheets and income statements, those are great for accountants, but they don't tell us the whole story. As an entrepreneur, as a business owner, we actually need to zoom in tighter to really understand what matters. You know, there are a couple of metrics that are super, super important. And even if you're not a metrics person, if you just focus on these couple, the key is you've got to get really accurate with what they are, and then you have to monitor them. So the first metric is the cost of acquisition for a new customer. In any business, in you know, any company, 
One of the things that we need to do is we need to get new customers, regardless of whether they're business to business, business to consumer, whatever our customer is, we have to be bringing in more of those in order to be able to make money. And there has to be a process for it that we know that we can follow to generate more customers. Otherwise, we really have a hobby, not a business. And so the cost of acquisition is really important because basically what it is, is it's the hard cost of what it actually costs you to get a new customer into your business. And so it may seem at first glance like, well, you know, that's pretty simple, right? You know, we, we run an ad and then we get a couple of customers and that's great. But that's actually not all there is to it. If we want to get real serious about this, then what we need to do is we need to figure out what our total costs were for all the marketing stuff that we're doing and divide that by the number of new customers that we got. So for example, let's say that um, in our business, we run an ad, and so that's X amount of dollars. And then let's say that we have two or three people that answer phones or take orders or whatever. Well, their salaries are going to be part of it as well because part of what they're doing, or mainly what they're doing, is doing the customer onboarding process. They're, they're taking orders. So that's part of our cost. You know, a lot of people will look at the advertising budget and they'll look at the, you know, customers and they'll say, okay, look, if we spent um, $1,000 on this ad and we brought in 100 new customers, it was $10 a customer, real simple. Well, that's your cost per acquisition for advertising for a new customer. That's not your overall cost per acquisition. Your overall cost per acquisition entails anything and everything that goes into that customer process. And so it's super important to understand that it's not just the advertising budget, it's the, it's the staffing, it's the personnel, it's any other things that went into the cost to be able to get that customer in the door. And so if you take all the total costs and you divide it by the total number of new customers, because cost per acquisition, remember, it's not based on the total number of sales. If you have six repeat sales, you didn't need to reacquire those customers. We're only talking about brand new customers that come into your business. And what we need to really be looking at here is we need to be looking at all of the composite costs that go into that to get that person in. Now, obviously, the more customers that we're able to get, what's going to happen is their cost is going to go down. So if we spend a thousand and we have two employees and we only get, you know, a hundred customers, you know, obviously it's going to cost us 10 plus whatever the d divided my number for the salaries are. But if we're able to get more customers, we're going to be able to shrink that cost down. So the average cost per acquisition will go down. And that is ultimately the goal. So we want to get our cost of acquisition for a new customer as low as possible. But the most important thing is to understand what it is right out of the gate. So for every new customer that comes in, what did it cost us to go out and get them? And that's a critical, critical uh, factor because it's going to help you with the next number. Now, the second metric that we need to look at is the lifetime value of a customer. So a lot of people, again, what they're going to look at is they're going to look at this is what we spent on ads and this is what we brought in for sales. Therefore, this is profitable. This is unprofitable. The challenge with that or the problem with that is it doesn't consider the overall value of a customer. A customer who comes into your store or buys from your business one time is obviously worth a lot less than someone who's going to come in and buy over and over and over again. So let's say, for example, um, we have an online store and our customer Joe comes in and buys a $50 item from our a $50 widget from our store. If Joe then disappears and we never hear from him again, his lifetime value for our company is $50, right? Because ultimately that's what we that's what we were able to sell. And really, what we want to look at is the lifetime value in terms of profit. Okay, so he might have bought a $50 item, but if that item costs us $40, right, that can either go into the cost of acquisition or it can come off of the lifetime value. But what we want to know is what is the profit that we earn from this particular customer on that sale? So if it was $50, but the, but the cost of, for production of the product was $40 or the shipping was $40, 
then it's $10 for that customer. Now, if Joe comes back in three months and then he buys a $25 product and then it comes back in a year and buys a $100 product and then comes back another year and buys a $75 product, each of those products, the profit from each one, all need to be added up together and combined to figure out what his lifetime value is. Now, you might say, well, lifetime value, though, if I have a new business, then how do I know that? I mean, somebody might be buying from me 10 years from now, but I'm not going to know that right now. That's true. But you can make good estimates based on the number of repeat buyers that you already have, and you can project it out. So it may not be exact if you're brand new or if it's short term, but what you want to get, figure out is you want to figure out what percent of your customers are buying from you over and over again. And then what you're going to do is you're going to figure out the average lifetime value. So again, you might have some customers that buy from you one time. You might have customers that buy from you three times. You might have customers that buy from you 10 times. We need to add all of that up. We need to add all the profit from all of those sales, and we need to divide it by all of the repeat customers. So that way we're able to figure out what our lifetime value is for the average customer. Because when we know these two figures, when we know what it costs us to get a new customer, and we know how much they're worth to us over their lifetime as a customer, customer lifetime is basically what we're talking about, then we have a, an ability to understand how much profitability we can have. Because the spread between those two, right? The spread between the cost and the lifetime value is ultimately our profit per customer. And the higher that number is, the more profit we're gonna make, the more profitable our company is going to be, the more likelihood we're going to survive. The lower that number is, the inverse is true. And so we need to know what that spread is. And the reason, there's a number of reasons we need to know that. For one, it's going to help us understand and it's going to help us track. Then we need to track that number. So we understand, is it getting bigger? Is it getting smaller? So it's some effort and it's some work up front to get this stuff going. But once you have these numbers calculated, it's very easy to recalculate and recalibrate and figure out what the trends are. But if you take these trends and you do it on a weekly or a monthly basis, you will see exactly how your business is performing. Because if that spread is growing, then what's happening is you're getting more and more profitable as time goes on. So even if you have short-term debt, and even if you need money to float your business, it's worth it because it's going to grow. If on the other hand, it's shrinking, and you see that the spread is getting smaller, then the problem you're gonna have is even if you get cash, to take care of today, it, that problem is only going to get worse because your margins are shrinking, your spread is shrinking. So the goal is always to figure out what that spread is and then to grow it as big as we possibly can. Because if we can grow that spread larger, then we can be more and more profitable. And the value in this, in addition to that, is once we understand what the lifetime value of a customer is to us, then we also understand what we can afford to spend to get them. So let's say, for example, um, I have a customer, and right now I'm not running any ads, but I want to grow my business. And I figure out that the lifetime value of a customer to me is $100. So every, every customer that I get is worth $100 in profit to me over the life of that customer. What that means to me now is that if I want to take out an ad, I've got to be able to get that ad to generate customers at a clip of less than $100 a customer to make it profitable. Any marketing activity I can undertake that I can spend money to grow, as long as it costs me less than what I will make over the lifetime value of the average customer, it's profitable. So I can use that to grow and I can use that to scale. Anything that costs me more, if I take out a $1,000 ad and I get seven customers, well, it's cost me over $100 a customer. That's a losing proposition. If I keep doing that, I'll be bankrupt and out of business before long. So what I need to do is make sure that all of my marketing activities are things where the, the cost for bringing a customer in is lower than what the value of that customer is to me over their lifetime. And that's a great way to be able to use as a decision-making tool 
for deciding about new marketing avenues and deciding what avenues to keep going with and what ones to can. You know, what ones need to be optimized and what ones are working really well. And by the way, while we're talking about lifetime value of customer, it's important to note that this can go above and beyond the customer themselves. And what I mean by that is, let's say, for example, that or what they buy from us themselves. So, for example, in the industry that I'm in, where I sell software, um, one of the things that I do is with my customer list, I am able to actually promote my partners and friends of other software products. And so they aren't making sales from me, but I'm generating affiliate commissions on those sales. So I'm generating extra money. So a buyer, a subscriber, a customer for me is worth more in lifetime value than they are to just my own bottom line sales. And that's another important thing to consider. You need to consider all the revenue angles for that customer and all the benefits that you're going to get in order to figure out and really calculate what their lifetime value is. So again, it can take a little bit of thinking. It can take a little bit of doing to really drill down to these numbers. But once we've done that, then we understand exactly what we can do and can't do to grow our business. You know, if an ad we want to take out is going to cost us more in getting new customers than we're going to make on them, we don't want to take it out. But instead of just flying blind and hoping, now we have some empirical numbers that we can work off of where we can really use that as a yardstick to understand, okay, the value is here. It also lets us test a lot of different marketing avenues and measure them really quickly and easily. Because if we know that our lifetime value of a customer is $100, any new advertising thing we're taking in, we can see what that cost is and we can evaluate based on our other expense structure whether or not it makes sense. You know, whether or not that's gonna be profitable for us in the long term. And that is a great way to do it. And then what we wanna do as business owners and entrepreneurs is we need to first off calculate that. So we need to figure out what our numbers are. The second thing that we want to do is we want to monitor that. So we don't just want to snapshot and see that, oh, today I'm making $100 and I'm spending 62. Awesome. We're profitable. Sky's the limit. Don't even worry about it. Boom. You know, launch, you know, open the floodgates. It doesn't quite work that way because there are going to be industry factors, economic factors. There are going to be cyclical natures of sales that are going to affect these things. So what we want to do is we want to calculate it, but then we also want to monitor it. So we want to be checking in weekly or monthly and rechecking our numbers to make sure they still check out. And the third step is we want to optimize these. So again, we want to, we want to grow that spread. We want to try to reduce the cost of getting new customers. So ways we could do that is with referral programs, right? With, um, with things that allow us to get other people into the funnel without spending money. Maybe we want to do some, you know, social media marketing or some goodwill type things. The other thing that we can do is we want to expand the lifetime value of a customer so we can do more proactive marketing to them. We can put in a, you know, frequent buyers plan where people get incentivized to keep coming back and buying from us again and again. These are all ways to extend and improve the lifetime value of the customer. The other thing that is um, sneaky, but very effective within all of this, is the higher the spread between the cost of acquisition and the lifetime value, the more competitive you're going to be and the less you need to worry about your competitors. If your competitors have a bigger spread than you do, they can outspend you to get new customers. So that can be very dangerous because they can afford to spend more to get new customers. If you have the biggest spread, then you can outspend them and you can bury them because you can actually go out and get a lot more customers than they would ever be able to get because you can afford to spend more to do it. And so the, those, are, those are the most important things to be focused on as a business owner and entrepreneur. So the takeaway here is that the two most important metrics in our business bar none, are the average cost of acquisition of a new customer and the average lifetime value of a customer. If the lifetime value is greater than the cost of acquisition, we can survive and we can thrive long term, even though we may need some financing for operations to float. The lower we can reduce the cost of acquisition and raise the lifetime value, 
the greater the spread and the higher, higher our profitability.